Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So before I start, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Yesterday was a, well, it was a good lawn day. I got a lot of lawn care done and uh, the lawn's just looking really, really good. It takes a while to really learn your lawn, um, but um, it's just coming in great. But I didn't get much done because I was distracted by the uh, IDW layoffs. So this is the last issue of the image. I say that because it's got an exclamation point. The image anthology. And I was actually kind of shocked to see Jason Latour in there. Jason Latour got canceled a few years ago for being a cad. But it wasn't anything bad enough to get arrested. And it was kind of at the tail end of all the Me Too's. It's like, really? That's enough to get you canceled? So he's back. He did this story about corporate mascots. Most of it is some pretty naff points. But this image in particular really stood out to me. I've been talking about this app called the Freedom App. So this app works well on my phone, but I was being kind of cheap and lazy. I was like, oh, I'm probably going to have to get another account for my tablet. But it turns out the one account can manage multiple devices. So I just blocked all of these time-wasting apps and websites, like just obliterated them. I've talked for years about why people should get off of Twitter, social media in general, but literally just a few hours of not waterboarding yourself with pop culture, your brain will heal. Back in the day when smoking was a thing, they used to show like how quickly lungs will heal when you just stop, and it's actually pretty amazing. I mean, your brain will start to function again within hours of just cutting yourself off from drowning in whimsy. So I think I'm going to start setting myself for these little windows. Like, hey, when you wake up, you got a half hour to waste time looking at TikTok. And then that app and the website on all devices is shut down. So I saw this TikTok and it was this guy, I forget what country it was from, but it was ancient. And it was at the end of his life. And he said... I've had a good life. Three times I've had plums and twice I've tasted apricots. Life didn't used to be about just constantly being entertained. Entertainment was something that happened once in a while. If you read books written by people from the olden days, their great joy will be going to the World's Fair once in their life and eating a candy apple. Like, that is just so freaking amazing to them. And then they live lives full of meaning, and occasionally they do something frivolous. You don't have to work in the mines all your life. Occasionally you can have cotton candy. But you don't want to have cotton candy for every meal, every snack between every meal, and do nothing but watch YouTube channels about cotton candy, talk about cotton candy, and then think about cotton candy when you're literally going to the bathroom before you immediately go back to your computer and continue obsessing about cotton candy. Why do I know who Leslie Headland is? I'm not even that huge of a Star Wars fan, but somehow I know the showrunner of a show that's been in development for three years and is probably vaporware. The last I heard, they just created a sizzle reel. <laughs> it's like, who are you trying to pitch to, yourself? Disney is pitching to Disney? It sounds like they got nothing, but they just need to show some kind of progress. Why do I know that Leslie Headland used to work for Harvey Weinstein? Why do I know that when just before I started the video, I had to Google the name of the mayor of the town I live in because I didn't know it? It's one of the amazing things when I started cutting myself off from, from pop culture and all these worthless arguments and discussions. All of a sudden, when most of your brain isn't concerned with bullshit, you will notice problems that you should have taken care of days, weeks, months, or years ago that you've been distracting with these low-level dopamine hits. It's so weird where I used to talk about the dopamine addiction like years ago, and it wasn't common knowledge, and people would just be like, come on, that's kind of a stretch. And now that's just like settled science. Everyone understands that people become addicted to social media because of dopamine. But I saw this other thing where they pointed out that the dopamine you get from social media, it's not even good dopamine. It's like low-level, cheap heat dopamine. 
Find a task in your house. I started giving myself an assignment. Every day, without fail, something needs to be improved. And I'm not talking about cleaning. I'm not talking about daily tasks. I'm talking about that bald patch in the yard. You need to plant some seeds right there. That faucet outside that's been leaking, you need to fix that, research how to fix that, or call a plumber to fix it. Trust me, <laughs> there is always something you can work on every day. It is never an issue of, I've run out of things to fix. There is always something to fix. That's life. It's just a bunch of tasks. And occasionally you have a candy apple. I really love this art by Jason Latour. And I especially like how he hand drew the logos instead of doing this which Adam Warren did in a backup story in the most recent issue of Harley Quinn where he used actual typography now it's fine when you do it on a book cover it's fine when you do it for TV but when you do it on a freaking t-shirt and he's trying out this sort of Robert Crumb art style holy shit it like ruined the entire story it just sticks out and yes I had to see this so you had to see it we get to see furry versions of Harley's hyenas somehow Adam Warren was able to be more insufferable than teeny Howard who wrote this dialogue in the main story you smell delicious were you at a festival no our latest universe ending threat fills her abode with things that smell like birthday cake my wife Merely say the word and I will have the entire might of the forerunners unleashed upon this frosting scented reality cancer. Here's my task for you for today. If you don't know the name of your mayor, look it up. And then, 10 minutes later when you remember the first name but not the last name, look it up again. And keep looking it up throughout the day until you know the name of the mayor of the city you live in. This is just a basic thing that every grown-up should just know. But I feel like I'm not the only person who has been drowning in whimsy, waterboarded by pop culture for the last few years to the point where my brain is essentially tapioca pudding. The problem with pop culture is that there's just too much of it. This is meant to be something like, after a long day at school or work, you watch a few hours of TV. A couple times a year, you go to the movies. You don't need this cheap heat. You don't need this low-level dopamine you get from social media and entertainment. The satisfaction you get from accomplishing a task, even if you have to call someone else to do it. I actually felt proud of myself with the freaking faucet thing outside because I did all the research to fix it, and then I was like, oh, it's not the faucet. It's the shutoff for the water main. And yeah, I'm not going to start fucking with that because if I mess something, it's like the full force of the water from the city water supply and I don't know how to shut it off. Well, it turns out when I called the plumber, I found out that there's this weird little hatch on the property that's the actual shut off from the city. So I learned something. I'm not telling you to give up on all pop culture. There's this thing in the comments. Oh shit, 199,000. Nice. Thank you. There's this bit that people do in the comments. They'll be like, Zach, stop watching anything related to pop culture. Also, Zach, buy my book based on the Rambo franchise. I'm speaking in good faith to people. I give you the credit of being intelligent, understanding nuance, and saying, I think everyone would benefit from a lot less pop culture. And yes, I do understand that could hurt me somewhat financially. But I think it helps myself and literally humanity for everyone to kind of unplug. The fact that I know the name of two people on Bud Light's marketing staff, I don't want to know, like, why do I know their names? It has nothing to do with my life. Somehow I know their names. But you know whose name I also know? The name of the mayor of the town I live in right now. Although I've had to look at it like four times because I'm just not used to I'm not used to knowing things that are important. I'm used to having my brain filled with useless pop culture bullshit. So anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel. Very exciting. We're about to hit $200,000. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.